Welcome to my homestead, y'all. I'm your host, Jenny Veliki, also known as the Funky Farm Girl. I'm working to create a home with a little farm, a little faith, a lot of food, and a bit of funky. I'm learning all about growing and preserving our food supply, raising chickens and children, and becoming more self-sufficient while leaning hard on Jesus. And I want to take you along for the ride. So grab yourself a cup of something wonderful, and let's visit a while. Hey y'all, this is the Funky Farm Girl, and you're listening to episode 20, Living in the Rhythm of the Seasons. Um, I'm your host, Jenny Veliki. I'm so glad that you're here with me today. I hope you guys are having a great week. Um, We're going to start out this episode a little differently than I have the others in the past. In the past, I have talked about what I'm learning this week, and I've decided that As we shift our focus um, to be more in line with the vision of the new podcast being about the homestead and not just about living intentionally, I wanted to also shift the focus of this first little thing that we do at the beginning of every episode. So instead of talking about what I'm learning this week, we're going to be talking about what's new on the homestead. And basically, um, this is going to coincide a lot with what I'm learning this week because I'm learning as I go. Um, I'm not an expert by any means. I am a newbie at all of this. And so each week, um, I'm going to be sharing with you some of the things that are new on the homestead and the things that we're doing now, um, and just kind of the current events of what's going on on the homestead. So the big highlight for this week is back to school preparation. I'm sure that for many of you, you've started back to school um, or you're getting ready to start back to school. And for a lot of you, you're having to either figure out how to do virtual learning at home for the first time. Maybe you're jumping in full head steam into homeschooling for the first time. Um, Maybe you're able to go into the school and have class um, in person, at least on a partial basis. Or maybe you're like us and you've been homeschooling for years and you're just continuing on with that. Um, But I know that all of us are in a season of preparation for that or just in the beginning stages of it. So for us, that has meant that this week I'm setting up notebooks and finalizing lesson plans and just making sure that I've nailed down each of the curriculums that my daughters will be using and what time they need with me and what time um, they have for independent study and how does that balance out with the rest of the schedule for the homestead and for my work and also my oldest daughter Gracie works at a local farm so keeping that in account too and just the family schedule in general Um, and so we've gotten all that lined up for the most part I have a little bit more that I need to do um, over the next couple days to get us all set up but we will be starting school on Monday so In this episode, episode 20, we're talking about living in rhythm with the seasons. And this was something that I was mulling over this year as it's really, really um, common at the beginning of the school year for people to almost see it as a second new year. It's, It's another fresh start. It's another time to get reorganized, to get refocused, remotivated, and to really think through what's your routine, what's your schedule, what's important, what's not, what can I cut, what do I need to add, all those types of things. And so we're very much focused at this season um, for most people on what our schedules look like, what our rest looks like, what our work looks like. And so I thought this week would be an excellent week to 
begin to talk about what it looks like to live in rhythm with the seasons. Um, before we do that, though, let's talk about what the typical American family year is like. Okay, so in the fall, we have the start of school, sports, and activities. Um, all of a sudden, your schedule is just slam full. You've got schedules um, for different football practice or um, soccer or maybe even basketball. Um, you've got kids starting school. They're in different activities at school. You might be ramping up at things at work. Um, then you have the whole new season with the school year comes the restart of things that may have fell off over the summer like youth group and church events and things like that that kind of slow down over the summer so fall just seems to be a really big push to let's hit the ground running and let's go again and then in the winter on top of all those things right about the time we get into a really good groove with those then you throw the holidays in at us and all of a sudden again we're in overload we've got parties to go to we have special events to go to we're we're baking and decorating and buying gifts and doing all the things and so again winter tends to be super super busy then the first of the year comes we take a little breather we take a breath and then spring break hits and spring break is the beginning of the downhill slide um, to summer and it's really when all of the you get back from spring break and it's like all the year-end stuff starts happening the year-end testing the year-end parties the year-end events the year-end award ceremonies um, the end of the season for baseball or soccer or whatever other sport your child might be involved in um, and they have to have a party for that and it's just lots and lots and lots of things coming up and starting and finishing and just lots and lots of things on your schedule and then summer comes and we finally all go oh. but then when we have that free time instead of resting and being like oh this is awesome what do we do we fill it up with camps we fill it up with sports camps and away camps and 4-h camps and different um, activities that we can go maybe we go to art camp during the day while mom and dad are at work um, maybe we, we go on vacation we go visit people we travel we do this we do that and it's like we have all this free time so we fill it and we fill it with lots and lots of things that are so fun that we never have time to do the rest of the year and then all that ends and we start right back at the beginning back to school and hit the ground running again so it's just this constant loop of activity 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 here's a busy season here's a small little bit of rest and then here's some more activity um, and every season feels like it's filled to the gills there's schedules of activities and committees and sports and other obligations that we have to the point that our calendars are always full our plates are always overflowing we're not resting we don't have margin we're just running full tilt all the time so one of the things that appealed to me um, in looking at homesteading was the mindset of going off the grid and a lot of people commonly will look at off-grid homesteading and automatically think oh no power no water no way <laughs> And to me, I don't even think of it in terms of power and water. Um, there are definitely a whole subset of, of homesteaders who really want to be self-sustainable to the point that they're living with their own means of power and water um, that they've been able to harvest from solar panels or rainwater or a well or whatever else. Um, but... What I'm talking about here with going off the grid is exiting the rat race. Getting off the grid that makes you go round and round in circles and send you to all these different events and organizations and sports and activities and PTA and 
school plays and all the different things that come up that just suck all of our time and leave us running ragged all the time. So I wanted to pull away from all of that. And it's, it's easier said than done because when we moved out here, we were 30 minutes away from where we had lived previously, still plugged into all the things that we were plugged into previously. So we were still in our homeschool co-op. We were still very active in our church. We were still um, trying to do the different things that we were doing then, but also plugging into the new community here and getting involved with 4-H and getting to know our neighbors and friends here and beginning to establish our homestead and very quickly things had to drop just very quickly um, we had to make adjustments right off the bat and start to say okay what value does this have what value does this over here have is this worth the commute is this worth the the energy and the time that it takes up and some of the things um were kept on the schedule despite the commute um we absolutely made a point of making sure that our girls were active in youth group we absolutely made a point that we were serving in the homeschool the homeless ministry um in our church we made it a point that um we continued to attend the church that we were attending those things were super important to us but different activities and extras and things like that that we were doing just quickly the little bit that we were doing fell off to the wayside um, and we began to plug into the community where we are and one of the things I love about the community here is that people are in this rhythm of the seasons kind of mindset and they don't pack their schedules to the gills. And so 4-H meets, but they only meet once a month. Um, and so it was easy for the girls to plug into something like that and it not be overwhelming to our schedule. But it did. It took a, a big um, adjustment to figure out what the rhythm of the season was. Um, instead of the rhythm of society. So what does it look like to live according to the rhythm of the seasons? So I just want to start out with the typical year and just kind of give you an idea from our perspective um, as first year homesteaders now that we've homesteaded for a full year now, year and a half. Um, what does that rhythm look like in our life and in the lives of most homesteaders you're going to have exceptions to the rule but for the most part this is the the rhythm of of the life of homesteading so in the fall um just a little ways down the road from now starting next month most likely um the harvest is going to start winding down. Um, you're going to have some food preservation still to do, but it's going to be less. Um, it's it's going to be a little bit of this and a little bit of that here and there. Uh, the harvest really slows down because you're you have a lot of things that have finished their season. Uh, I was super busy with cucumbers during the summer but then they got to the end of their life and they were done and so i don't have that everyday maintenance of that to deal with now um and different things in the garden are finishing their cycles and as they do that we pull them out and we clean up the garden and that part's done um there is stuff that we're adding back in but even in doing that the garden is a lot easier to manage even with the things that are still there that will still be producing all the way up until that first frost date and even beyond that um you're not having to deal with heat 
um, when you get into the fall you don't have the extreme temperatures that you do and you're not worried about sun scorch and you're not worried about making sure stuff has enough water you're not worried about things wilting you're not worried about trying to put shade cloth over things because they've got too much heat um, you're not worried about things stalling out because it's so hot um, and then on top of that most of the pests and diseases that that you typically would deal with in a garden happen during the hottest parts of the summer so when you wait and do a fall garden you eliminate the battle that that is because those pests have already lived out their little life cycle and they're gone and they're not an issue um, you don't have things like powdery mildew because you're not having watering issues you don't have wilt and blossom in rot because you don't have the same kinds of things going on as you do in the summertime um, so the garden is easier to manage you're also not producing as many weeds because when everything else slows down growing so do the weeds so um, it makes it a lot easier to manage um, fall is also a time of preparation uh, this is when we start to do projects that we've noticed around the homestead that need to be done that it's just too blazing hot in the summer to do it um, one of the things we're going to be doing is doing a little bit of musical chairs with our chicken coops and trying to set up um, two chicken coops added to our run instead of one and then also having a separate chicken coop with a little bit bigger run than it has now um, so that we can set up for some projects that are coming up in the spring with the chickens um, also you're getting ready for winter um, for the parts of the garden that are done growing there are things you need to do to to get that ground ready you plant a cover crop and you um, get it get all the old plants and stuff out you weed it real good plant that cover crop and then you let it sit and rest um, you need to also make sure that you have what you need for the animals for the winter do you need heated bowls for water do you need um, to insulate different things better to keep wind off of of animals and things like that um do you need to mend fences or um pens or things like that um and then fall is usually the typical time to start butchering animals uh if you've done meat chickens or meat rabbits if you've got a pig ready if you're butchering a cow most of that typically is done in late summer or fall and um, so then you have the processing of that and it's done then because everything else is a little bit calmer and it's easier to deal with and that's usually your growth cycle is when about when you would um, be ready to butcher those animals um, also going back to school brings a return to routine and we start to settle in at home and in the summer we are taking breaks from the homestead and the work of the homestead whenever we can and so we do do some outings and, and go and do a little more than the rest of the year and so when school starts everybody is craving to just stay home and to settle in and so that's something that we usually do and we keep sports and activities just really minimal our girls are involved in youth group and that is twice a month our girls are involved in 4-H and that's once a month and um, when COVID-19 is no more or is no longer a concern we'll be able to go back to dance once a week um, but until then we don't have that on the calendar either so so this just gives us a time to catch our breath and start to relax and slow down it's like putting the brakes on after being full speed ahead for several months um, and it's a welcome relief at that point to be able to slow it down 
and to hit the brakes especially when everybody else around you is starting to gas up and go and everybody else is revving and hitting the ground running and you're like oh I can finally slow down <laughs> um, so it's it's been a little weird um, to experience that and be aware that that's what's going on um, for the first time because last year I don't think it really clicked with me that that was happening so then winter comes and when winter comes and you've had your final frost the garden is done basically anything that's still out there are things like turnips and um, carrots and um, things of that nature that can be outside while it's still cold and they'll just stay in the ground until you're ready to pull them and eat them so you really don't have anything to do in the garden because it's it's gone into its hibernation it's sleeping and resting um so the only thing for the garden really that you're doing is you're beginning to plan and dream for the spring it's a great time to sit down and think about okay what went really well in my garden this year and what absolutely did not I learned this year that growing five different kinds of peas and beans means you're just going to get a tiny bit of each one and that instead I should pick my favorite and grow five times as much of it next year so that I get a significant harvest instead of getting one meal out of all the beans that I have to get five or six at a time until I have enough um, I can eat off of it several times and be harvesting a lot more of one crop rather than dealing with five or six smaller ones um, it's also the time to get some maintenance mode done what do you need to do in the garden that you can just get it to the point get your cover crop in and then at some point you cover that um, with plastic is what we do and let the ground sit we the the animals are basically in maintenance mode they don't lay as many eggs they're not as active um, you're basically feeding them water and making sure they're warm and in the house you're basically doing the same thing you're feeding and water in the kids and making sure they're warm and home tends to be a lot less to to take care of and work with in the winter as well it tends to be maintenance mode for us we dial it back down and we just kind of let things go a little bit as far as you know we're not doing a lot of major work for example in the kitchen doing preservation and um, produce prep and food prep and all that we're doing a lot simpler meals stews and soups in a crock pot and those kinds of things so home just becomes very chill and the outside in the garden and in the animal where the animals are is also very chill everybody is just let's just eat and keep warm and stay hydrated <laughs> um however if we get an itch to be productive and do things this is the time that i do home projects that have been waiting uh, there are several decorating things that I have wanted to do in this house since we moved in um, that I haven't been able to get to yet because of working with the homestead and so this winter is when I plan to do things like install my bee wall gallery um, and paint the kitchen and the master bedroom things like that that they're extras they don't have to get done but they're things that if they're going to happen that's when they're going to happen is in the winter time when everything else is a little bit looser and more relaxed it's also a great time to really plug into hobbies i love to paint i would love to learn to paint better and to learn a few new techniques and things like that so I'm looking forward to this winter having time to really dig deep into hobbies um, I'm sure that 
My daughter Amber will be doing lots of baking this winter. Keeping the house warm by keeping the oven going. And I'm sure my other girls will be working on different things as well. It's just a, a good time to have hobbies and fill up your own cup and give yourself a little something more um, that kind of lights up your heart before it's time to get back to work. Um, holidays, because we are in such a hibernation mode, um, holidays, we are really focusing on making them simple and low-key. I have really, really pared down our holiday decorations. I have let go of perfectionism with a lot of things. I really encourage the girls to jump in and and do their own thing with decorating the tree and Christmas goodies and things like that. And, and part of that comes with the territory of having older kids that uh, if they want a Christmas goodie, I could teach them how to make it so that they can be the one to make it instead of all of that being on me every year. Um, so the things that we do together during that time of year also tend to just be really chill. Um, spending time with family. Um, we watch lots of movies and things like that. Really, we we just stro- we focus in on rest. We're snuggling in at home. We're spending more time just our family and also spending more time with extended family than we are able to the rest of the year. And it's just really a good rest and renewal type season. And then at the beginning of the winter season, we have hunting season. So it's actually late fall, early winter is when hunting season falls falls so um, we have a couple weekends away to the cabin to go and hunt for deer and we kick off with dove hunting in the fall and go all the way through New Year's Day with um, a couple different things before the end of hunting season comes and when hunting season's over then we can start seeds for the garden and that just gives us a little bit of something to do about that time you're itching to start looking around and saying okay what is it what can I do I'm ready for the sun I'm ready to get back to work I'm ready to get outside and start working the ground again and being with my animals more and doing all those types of things so then spring comes and we hit the ground running because it is the beginning of increased work and activity. We have seeds to plant. We have a garden to prep and get ready for planting. And then we have plants to put out. And when they're little seedlings, they take a little bit more fuss and attention than when they're full grown. Um, Then with animals, you're looking at everybody to see how they fared after the winter. You're deciding who goes and who stays and who needs to be added to and um, so then you have babies whether it's um, goat kidding season and you're got lots of goats giving birth or whether you're buying baby chicks to, to begin that process of adding to your flock or raising them to sell um, or running eggs in the incubator and those types of things there's lots of um things to do with the animals on the farm and spring is really a time for lots and lots of fresh air because we've been inside for so long and we're so ready to get out and so there's lots and lots of excuses and reasons to go outside we eat outside a lot we hang out around the fire pit a lot and it's just um, the beginning of enjoying the busy season and then that runs into summer everything is running at full tilt when summer comes and it's all hands on deck the garden is producing lots and lots of things very very quickly and those have to be prepped and processed and preserved 
Uh, you're either eating lots and lots of fruits and vegetables in a small amount of time or you're freezing them or dehydrating them or getting them chopped and ready to can and then you're running the water bath canner and the pressure canner and you're just go 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 with that on top of that you're trying to manage pests and disease and weeds in the garden to make sure that you get the best pro production crop that you can get um, and then you're managing heat and water and making sure that everything's doing well and staying healthy and growing like it should and that um, you're vigilant to be out there watching for any little change that might happen that could cost you an entire crop of tomatoes because a hornworm came to visit overnight. Um, and in that time of year, I'm doing lots of getting up really early in the morning to get outside before it gets humid. And I'm doing lots of going out after dinner and staying until it's almost too dark to see um, to try to hit the cooler parts of the day. There is a lot to do, um, but there's also the heat to consider. And sometimes it's really difficult to balance getting the work done that needs to be done with staying out of the heat and making sure that you're only out there um, during the cooler parts of the day. So this Rhythm of Seasons um, has seasons of busy and seasons of rest. And we need that. We need time that we're busy and time that we rest rather than go, 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 go all the time. And really following the rhythm of the seasons really mimics nature. Because if you think about the life cycle of a plant, you have a seed that you put in the ground um, or a seed that has been sown into the soil from a plant in the fall and the seed falls into the ground and it lays dormant all winter long and all winter it's resting it's storing up its energy and then in the spring there's a lot of unseen pre-work done underground just like that we're planning and prepping and getting going and nobody really sees you planting seeds that you store under a grow light in your garage nobody really sees you um, out there plowing up your ground and pre-weeding and you know fertilizing your soil and doing soil test samples and things like that beforehand what they see is the produce that comes. So they're not seeing that pre-work that's done ahead of time in the spring. And just like us, the plant is doing all kinds of work underground before that seed ever sprouts that we don't see. But it's getting everything that it needs to be able to shoot up out of the, out of the ground and produce a plant. So then in the summer, that plant grows a mile a minute. It produces all kinds of stuff and feeds us really well and works really hard to keep pumping out produce just over and over and over again and in the middle of that it's fighting all that heat and drought and um, water issues and pests and disease and all those things to keep producing so it's working super 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 hard and in this fall it starts to slow down and it puts out seed for next year it's like okay I've done my work. I've worked hard. I've done the things that I've needed to do. Now here's a little something to help me get started next year. And now it's time to rest. So how about you? Are you in the process right now of gearing up or slowing down? Can you set aside regular seasons of rest? And if you can't, what's stopping you? Let's talk about it over on my Instagram page, The Funky Farm Girl. Join me next week and we will talk about those seeds and how you can save yours for your garden next spring. See you next week. Thanks for stopping by, y'all. If you're inspired by what you've heard today, the best compliment you can give me is to share The Funky Farm Girl with your friends. You can stay connected by following The Funky Farm Girl 
on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Until we meet again next week, remember to bloom where you're planted.